Well, now India Today's Managing Editor Rahul Kamal spoke to Congress leader Shashi Tharoor on the budget 2018. And let's now listen in to what all he had to say. Congress getting good news from Rajasthan. Dr. Shashi Tharoor of the Congress party is with us. Dr. Tharoor, uh, there are lots of murmurs in the BJP that this is also down to the dissonance, the factionalism in the BJP state unit. You've got Vasundra Rajay on the one side, you've got the Om Mathur camp on the other, and that's partly the reason that the BJP has lost. You know, we saw what happened with Anandi Ben Patel in Gujarat. Similar games afloat here in Rajasthan. How much of it is internal rift in the BJP and how much of it is the work of the Congress and do you see the Congress bounce back now? Look, in a democracy pretty much every party has its own internal contradictions, factions and challenges. That can't be an excuse for losing an election so comprehensively. Uh, elections, by the way, that in the previous time they had actually won with a lack majority, they've now got clobbered. Uh, in both Alwar and Ajmer. So I think we now have to understand that there is a widespread perception around the country of which Rajasthan is the example that not only has this government failed to deliver the goods, whether locally or nationally, but that people are beginning to realize that the key question is not what kind of Hindu you are, the key question is, has your life improved under BJP rule? And more and more people are saying quite clearly, no, it is not. Do you see this as a larger trend where a lot of these uh, seats, the Lok Sabha seats have huge rural populations as well? Do you see as being a continuation of the Gujarat trend or do you think that would be too much to do? I think that it's probably the same trend as Gujarat. I'm not certain that it has intensified. Remember what is special in many ways about the Rajasthan BJP Congress fight is that this is a state where in some sense we have known for a while that Congress has has been on the ascendant and has been able to put up a good fight. That may not be the case in many of the other states across the north and the west where the Congress faces the BJP. In a place like UP or in uh, Bihar or even Madhya Pradesh, it's not quite certain that an anti-incumbency anti sentiment will coalesce around the Congress as it has here. That said, the number, the size of the swing in these two constituencies is so huge that I think, I'm sure that Amit Shah and his numbers team are looking very, very carefully at booth level data to determine are, some, are the more rural booths the ones that have really turned this around. No, but the other reality of this election is that there were reverses in Gujarat, in the Panchayat elections, in the bipoles, and despite that, the BJP won. So that's also the reality. When they get down, this could just be about, you know, their own internal Rajasthan fight playing out. Once that gets resolved, then before the election, uh, Dr. Tharoor, they could still get the act in order. And the Congress, which may seem to be intact and fighting as one now, that whole Sachin I, I, pilot, Ashok Gehlot, uh, you know, narrative could start playing out and you could see a sudden rift emerge where, as of now, you don't see it. Look, you know, it's always retrospective, you see. When a party wins, suddenly all talk of rift is buried and whenever a party loses, it's blamed on dissidents. Let's look at the merits of the issues. I beg to differ with your analysis about rural and urban because frankly, the Lok Sabha constituencies are still majority rural. And in our country, 60 odd percent of the population still lives in the countryside. They have no reason to be happy with the BJP government, I'm sorry to say. And therefore, the odds are very high that you're going to have an absolutely serious reversal of fortune nationally. What we saw in Rajasthan was a harbinger of something that is apparent elsewhere. Gujarat, don't forget, is one of the most urbanized states in the entire country. There is no state in India which has a larger, of a comparable size anyway, which has a larger percentage of people in urban areas. So if the BJP was able to pull off a win, in Gujarat, that does not necessarily mean anything for any other state in the country. Yes, sir, you saw earlier the level of anger amongst the farmers we were speaking to. That's not a scientific sample, but just a random collection of farmers. All of them displaying a high level of discontentment. 
Gujarat, Rajasthan, is there a trend there? And will the governments attempt to try and bridge that gap through this budget succeed? Well, if they had started four years earlier, it would have succeeded. Uh, but uh, this is much, it's, many of the things they have proposed are sensible, like the FPO uh, arrangements for, I've been arguing for this for years now. And I'm, at last, uh, something has been done. But it can't be done in, uh, that quickly. Uh, similarly, what they have said on the MSP, I welcomed it. Uh, but they haven't spelled out how. And they certainly haven't provided for it. Uh, it's not as if they are going to be able to fund it. And, you know, I wrote my piece on what the budget is going to be yesterday. And it more or less turned out to be what it, <laughs> I expected. The only thing I have to add in my title is, where is the money? That's the only thing I needed to add. And this is the problem. Okay, there that really, like, Santosh Mehrotra, is the only question the government is trying to answer. Try and win over rural India. That's their key thrust. Do you think through this budget, they'll be able to achieve that? Well, I endorse the view of uh, respected Mr. Desai. I completely agree with him. It should have been started much earlier. And I would just remind all our viewers that, you know, China, when it began its reforms in 1980, it began with agricultural reforms and increased productivity dramatically and improved incomes and reduced poverty throughout the country. And it was only thereafter, 10 years later, that they began industrial reforms, in it, you know, triggering off a private sector development, etc. Unfortunately, we seem to have gone about it in rather the wrong way. In first, we sort of didn't invest in agriculture and we're still not investing enough and we have not invested in manufacturing and that's the result the result is for all to see as i was saying earlier in 25 years the share of manufacturing in gdp and the share of manufacturing in employment has remained roughly the same even after you know, uh, know, uh, will the government's <laughs> rural headache be resolved and to what extent through this budget? No, so w w there's a long-term trend in which agriculture has been neglected because we have a very urban-centric policy, but also there's a short-term problem which has come with demonetization and with the GST. And that problem is a recent problem that we need to tackle. And this budget, you know, is trying to tackle the fact that farmers are protesting everywhere in the country. If you see from January last year, starting from, you know, Tamil Nadu and then going on to Madhya Pradesh and various other states of the country, you see farmers throwing the potatoes on the street, you see, see farmers throwing the tomatoes on the streets, etc. They're not getting the uh, produce a price that they should get. So the gap between what the price they get and the gap that the consumer pays that has increased enormously in the in the process so in other words the farmers crisis is something that you have to deal with an immediate not a long term solution that you are looking for and therefore my suggestion would be that this crisis cannot be dealt with only by this budget because the provisions are not there for instance no, the, but Sanjeev, the reality yeah, is that the, the, the rural prop the agrarian distress problem in india is so severe it can't be dealt with in any one budget but, to what extent is this budget yes. helping move in that there direction? Are, there are at least three very specific things and extremely proactive and good steps that the budget has taken. First and foremost, the you know the whole business about lessees, those batai pigeon logon hai, zameen le rakhi hai, they cannot access credit. Now people who are lessees are going to be made eligible for crop loans. And the amount of crop loan has been increased to 11 trillion rupees. Those are two. The third one is the very progressive thing that they are going to give a big push to agri-products export, which they want to increase threefold to a level of $100 billion from $30 billion. And the most important thing, FM has given an assurance that they will liberalize the regime for export of these agro-products. So, you know, there are many other specific things like this that, that this, they, they have done which are very praiseworthy. So it's not just all in the air. It's specific, it's to the ground. Okay. Some are in the air. So I'm, I'm told to the that the meeting that the Prime Minister was having with BJP MPs is over. So uh, Rail Minister Piyush Goyal, HRD Minister Prakash Javrekar, they've both reached home. I'm hoping to be joined by them in a moment from now. That's the live frame that we're getting from Prakash Javrekar's residence. Uh, he's just dropped me a message that will be joining uh, you in just a moment from now. So let me take a very quick break. When we come back, we'll have responses from the government. Our experts have several questions. They made some very incisive points. What does the government have to say in response?
Thanks for watching the video. For more such news and updates, please like, share and subscribe to India Today. Also check out our other great videos from our channel. We know you would love to.